and welcome to this week's serving of Mickey Waffles, a Disney podcast where we cover everything from parks, movies, and merchandise. My name is Sinead. My name is Kate. For the third time this evening, it's still Kate. <laughs> We've recorded a lot of shows today, guys. Yes. Hopefully this is the last one that you'll be hearing. Hopefully the other two went out before this. We did two separate mini waffles, one on Halloween at DLP and one of Tower of Terror. Yes. Now, ladies and gentlemen, it's the main show. Well, it's a big show. It's time for the main show. It's time for our general trip report, not specific to Halloween. But before we get to that, we have the teeniest, the tiniest, the smallest, itty bitty little bit of news. So we're going to go through these so quick. We've got the October pins. So quick. So quick. Mm -hmm. So released last Saturday, there was three Are You Brave Enough pins. If the Tower of Terror one is still there when we go, I'm going to buy it. So there's Tower of Terror, there's a Maleficent one and an Ursula one, and they also are you brave enough? They're six ninety nine. I'm gonna get Ursula. What a surprise! There was also um, a mini rose gold black glitter pin, which is very out of season. I don't really understand why it's there, um, and that's seven ninety nine. On the twelfth of October, the two exclusive pins that were released were the Rapunzel carousel pin. That's a limited to 700. It's 59.9. They're going to be all gone. The second one is another best friend, which is um, Todd, Fox and the Hound. Todd and Copper. Yeah, I was like, that's not their names. It says Rox and Rookie. And I was like, that's their French. That must be their French names. That's bizarre. Isn't it weird? That's also limited to 700. Again, it's a cute world's best friends pin. Makes sense. That's 59.9. They're both going to be gone. Don't worry about it. Then we have Christmas Dumbo with the Santa hat on. Adorable. 7.99. Uh, Pan Pan, which is Thumper, with a little Sam hat on, seven ninety nine. There is Chip and Dale with a twenty twenty pin. That's nice. I do like the twenty twenty logo. I have to say. Cute. There's also a twenty twenty lanyard, which is nine ninety nine, and a twenty twenty booster pack, which is nineteen ninety nine. There's a mini twenty twenty pin, which is six ninety nine. There's a twenty twenty coin, which is six ninety nine. There's another 2020 pin with Mickey and the Castle, which is 999, and there's a 2020 pin that's a spinner pin for 1299. That I'm, looks fun. Which I might get because I do enjoy a spinner pin. On Saturday, the 19th of October, there are three limited edition pins. So there is Scrump in a little pumpkin thing. It's so cute. That's adorable. There's a limited 75999. Then there's Stitch dressed up as a pumpkin in a wagon. That's fifteen ninety nine, and then there's Lilo dressed up as a witch, and she's trick or treating, which is fifteen ninety nine. They are all limited to seven hundred. They all need to be booked online, Birdie, and they're released on Saturday, the nineteenth of October. Then we also have a bunch of Mickey Americana ranges, which, which makes no sense. I don't know. It's not the fourth of July, which is the only time of year I think this would make sense. So there is a Mickey Americana head pin, which is nine six ninety nine. There's a Mickey silhouette Americana, which is six ninety nine. There's a lanyard, which is nine ninety nine. There's a Main Street pin, which is the only thing I think I like, which is six ninety nine. There's another Mickey Mouse text one from nine ninety nine, and then there's a Mickey Americana Legend, which it just says American Legend for seven ninety nine. No. I don't really enjoy any of them. I'm all right. Then there's some Frozen Two pins. So we've got an Olaf one, which I love and I'd quite like to get if possible, <laughs> which is six ninety nine. It's Olaf, but he's all like discombobulated and says Olaf. There is an Anna, which is $6.99. There's a Pin Frozen Family, which is $9.99, which I find surprising because I think it's going to be quite big. Yeah. It's got everyone on it. Then there is a little pocket pouch for Frozen. It's $5.99. It's a nice vertical one. It is. It's a vertical one. I'm excited to see it. I'm like, mm, interesting. New design. It's like a cross between the ones that fall off and the ones that came on the bottom of the lanyards mm. so it's good I'm excited there's also a lanyard which is quite nice then there's an Elsa by herself which is seven nine nine. there's a booster pack which doesn't have Anna in it but it does have the snow horse oh yeah so Elsa's been replaced by the snow horse in that one that's nineteen ninety nine, as all booster packs are and then there is an Olaf spinner pin which I'm excited to see what spins on it maybe it's his hand maybe he waves oh that's cute I, quite I have an well. oogie pin that's like that and that's twelve ninety nine. Then on Wednesday, the 23rd of October, there are three special edition medallions. They're all limited to 150. Look at little Figaro! So, you've got Figaro. so they're all 25.99 and they're all limited to 150. There's Figaro with a fishbowl, there's Pinocchio, and then there's one with Sven. Again, I don't really understand that range. Then on the 26th of October, which is also a Saturday, is a Stitch and Ducks, which is I Feel Timid, which is I Feel Shy. What? 
So it's a, it's a little shy stitch. He's in some roses, having a good time with Anne Duck. It's fifteen ninety nine. It's a limited seven hundred, and again it's Lime Birdie. Then the pin trading night is in Hotel Santa Fe in La Cantina. It's on the twenty fifth of October. Book tickets now. It starts at six. Beautiful. And that's it. Nothing majorly amazing to comment on, to be honest. Honestly, the only thing I'd half be interested in is if they have the Ursula Are You Brave Enough pin left when we go. Mm-hmm. I'm not feeling too hopeful after how it went with getting Chippendale. Yeah. But we'll see. I do like the Tower of Terror one, but I think that one might be quite popular because of yeah. how it all went down. But yeah, they're the pins. Fab. And moving on to another little bit of Disneyland Paris news. Guys, just want to hear an update about the railroad uh, they might as well just get rid of it like so ed92 posted a tweet last week saying a new episode of when will the disneyland railroad reopen drama series is available the estimated reopening date has moved from december 2019 to april 1st 2020 are they trolling us all having it on april fool's day yeah probably <laughs> so they have also said note that it is a moving target and they do not recommend planning a visit purely based on this reopening on April 1st. Why can Disneyland Paris... April 1st. N- why can DLP not reopen stuff? Four months. But like, that's... But they were supposed to open in August. Yeah, I know, but, but that's nearly... Why? What's wrong with them? I just... Uh, also, Autopia was supposed to be open when we were there. It's that's, now not reopening until December. I was thinking that as well. I was like, did we talk about the fact that Autopia was supposed to be open? Yeah, because Brittany was even, buzzing. It doesn't even look like it's ready to be open. No. Aye, aye, aye. Let's not talk about it anymore because we'll get annoyed. Yeah. The I'm going to say the second last bit of news because I think we should talk about something that happened overseas. The There's going to be extended park hours for Christmas season. Both parks will be open at 9am with extra amount of time from 8am to 9am on selected dates. So December 7th and 8th, December 14th and 15th and December 21st until the end of the year. Whoop, whoop. Wow. And then the last thing I think we should talk about quickly before we go into our trip tour is, oh, you've got something else. I do. Just a quick thing to, I suppose, just mention. If you are going to be at either of the Halloween parties that DLP are running this year, keep an eye out for these really cute cake pops that they're having at the parties. They're only oh, available. Oh, I completely forgot. I'm so sorry. <laughs> they're only releasing them at the two Halloween parties. So the one on the 26th and the one on the 31st. One is... Phantom Manor and the other is Terror of Terror so are me and Kate going to buy these? abso freaking lootly yes because they look bloody adorable mm, yes. but yeah keep an eye out for those there's no pricing for them as of yet I would assume they'll probably be that usual 4 29 price that a lot of DLP snacks are so yeah we'll hopefully be able to get some cute pictures with those yes um, and then the only other thing that I wanted to mention is just an acknowledgement of the fact that I'm sure you all heard that the Skyliner in Walt Disney World very recently opened and then very recently had an incident which is very upsetting because it hadn't even been open a week and it had a crash boom yeah it's a bit concerning yeah so basically a lot of people were like oh it crashed and blah 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 I, what, what I actually think happened was the system had a downtime and so everything just shut off for a reason that they don't know but I've seen pictures of them crashed in yeah, the thing. Yeah, because the thing stopped. And so, like, they just sort of, like, kept moving and crashed into each other. Oh, okay. So I think that's what happened. It's not because things sped up and crashed into each other. Oh, yeah. It's like the system had a downtime, malfunctioned. And then I think just, like, gravity sort of, like, did the rest. Yeah. So I don't mm-hmm. actually think it was a speed issue or anything. I think it was just a system issue. Luckily, no one was hurt. There was a lot of people stranded up in the air for... Up to three hours. Yeah, which is a bit... That's horrific. It is quite bad. Luckily, it was at night time, so it was cooler than it would have been during the day because, as a lot of people have said, the ventilation only really works when you're moving. Yeah. And even at that, it was obviously still warm. Yeah, because Florida usually at night is still like 26 degrees. Yeah. We won't go into it too much because we could be here for hours talking about Disney and Skyline or whatever. Luckily, nobody was hurt. Some people did get compensated we personally don't think enough some people ended up getting like a park ticket and a hundred dollar gift card yeah which is not which we don't really think for what happened is enough and we hope that people do fight for a little bit more compensation because you can do that but anyway just for a note the skyliner will be completely closed until they figure out what went wrong yeah it's obviously not ideal but i mean 
the one thing that I thought was madness to watch was how people were getting evacuated off it. So it was either the like extension ladders from fire trucks were yeah. being sent up and people were climbing down from them. Or I seen a video of people literally they connected a zip wire up. Oh wow. And people were zip lining out of them. That sounds like so much fun. <laughs> like one of the things was literally they were they had a recovery crew go up to them. People were being strapped into a harness and being given a helmet and all that kind of stuff and basically being expected to zip line back down to the ground. Like I'd expect major compensation for that. Imagine like one thing if you're a person that like doesn't mind yeah like, obviously i would have i wouldn't have or minded. isn't like pregnant or elderly that wouldn't be able to do that if i was asked now i'm not elderly or pregnant <laughs> but if i was like i'm deathly afraid of heights and falling like i can think of nothing worse like th- i would have to just be left there until they could get them moving again because there's no way they would have got me out of that yeah i think it was a thing of i also saw one i think there was like a couple of different ways i presume if you you couldn't like if you weren't up for the whole zipline escapade yeah. you didn't have to i'd say it was just like probably a, a quicker method of getting people out yeah. if they were ready to go yeah. i think i also saw one where it was like a platform okay. that was it was almost like a cherry picker oh okay fair um that i would probably be better at. yeah be. because obviously not everybody who's on the skyliner can climb down a ladder as well yeah so it was almost like a cherry picker and people were like walking onto this like stage thing and then being brought down yeah so i think there were various methods but also people were complaining that there wasn't an emergency thing brought out quick enough Mm. but i think it's also a thing of like they have to make sure everything's in place before they do it as well yeah so i think it can take time to even just put an emergency plan into action i think they knew everybody that was stuck wasn't in an emergency because there's a little there's an emergency phone that you can use to call and i presume if anyone was in like a major emergency they would have made a quick yeah. one for them, but everyone seemed to be okay enough. So they obviously had systems. It's the same with anything new. Like again, it had only been open less than a week to the public. Yeah, teething problems. Exactly. That's pretty much everything for the news, except one thing. You know what today is, Kate? Today's Tuesday, and you know what that means. <laughs> special guest Tuesday. But due to inclement weather, special guest Tuesday did not take place this week. Oh. However. We didn't even get to see Special Guest Tuesday last no, week. No, we missed the end of the goddamn song. And I was like, was that Special Guest Tuesday? Yeah. And everyone that was in the group with us was like, what the fuck are you talking about? And I'm like, did none of you listen to our podcast? And I'm like, everyone be quiet. I'm trying to see if we missed it or if it's just starting. <laughs> so, Indie 92 posted a tweet today, which is Tuesday. And it said, as a reminder, Tuesday Guest Star Day is performed at 1.10pm during the Halloween season. We did. We were not made aware of this, and ED92 were also not aware of this last week because no. they tweeted saying, "Special Guest Tuesday took place at lunchtime for some reason." It was the Aristocats and Edgar. Yeah. So we missed out on the Aristocats and Edgar, which I'm a little bit sad about because I love the Aristocats and I've never seen Edgar. I didn't mind too much. I'm just. But I was oh. sad that we missed it. Yeah. Because like, why? I was because I was saying to Ed because Ed was like, "What are you talking about? Like, what what's going on?" And so I explained it to him, but I was like, it doesn't make any sense to have it if nobody knows when it's going to be on. Yeah, exactly. So anyway, that was that. Hopefully Special Guest Tuesday will be someone fun next week. Yeah. Now that really is it for the news. Woohoo! Now it's into our trip report. Okay, so we're going to start at the beginning. <laughs> with the logistics. So there were six of us traveling. We traveled over with Air France. We traveled back with Air Lingus. Flight over was fine, wasn't delayed. No. It was actually early. Yeah, it was, it was pretty good. It took a long time to find somewhere to park. <laughs> when we arrived. Yeah. Yeah, when we arrived both times actually, even when we came home with Aer Lingus, yeah. they were like, yeah, we're just waiting for a parking space. <laughs> yeah. I think it was because we arrived early, they weren't ready. Yeah. The good thing about Air France though is we got a little snick snack paddy whack on the way over. We did, got a little chocolate muffin. I fell asleep because our flight was at 6 a.m. <laughs> so I fell asleep and when I woke up, Breffney was just kind of gesturing towards this chocolate muffin that had just appeared on my tray table and I was like, oh hello! <laughs> <laughs> so that was a nice little surprise. And yeah, I got it was some great. juice. Uh, yeah, I had chocolate muffin and some orange juice. And oh, I had apple juice. Oh, I got a muffin and a uh, coffee. Very nice. Which is great. Also, little note, I dropped my phone before take off okay. completely lost it and ended up retrieving it at the end of the flight so we were we were third row from the back so when the flight landed and everyone was doing that huh, 
we go, even though... Because they're all so busy. Yeah. Ed hopped up and ran to the back seat to see if my phone was there. And it was. But then turns out on the way home, on their Lingus flight, they said in the safety thing yeah if you drop your phone at any point please immediately get a crew member and we'll find it and that's obviously in case which I actually never crossed my mind in case something happens to your phone your phone ends up blo- and your phone ends up blowing up yeah that they'll need to know where it is and I just like and then I was like hmm I flew the whole way over here not knowing where my phone was <laughs> joys Ed like nudged me and he was like you idiot <laughs> oh dear I know we'd mentioned on our trip planning episode that we'd had some issues with Air France because they cancelled our original flight home they rescheduled us for two separate flights that were just not applicable and we were told that we couldn't request a refund until we'd taken the first flight so I did what I said I was going to do before we took off on the flight I messaged them on Twitter sent them my um, booking reference and said I want to request a refund for this flight that you cancelled blah 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 And it actually kind of worked because by the time I landed, they were like, yeah, here's the link. Yeah. Go submit your request. And I was like, beautiful. So that was on the Monday morning. That was like 9 a.m. French time. And by the Thursday morning, they had emailed us all. Well, (laughs) they'd emailed me anyways and been like, hi, Sinead, here's your refund. We've confirmed that we're refunding you for your Breffney's flight. This is how much you're going to get. It can take up to 14 days. Yeah. I had the easiest yeah. time with it. Nathan and Kiva had a time because their flight had the ro- been cancelled. Yeah. The, the wrong note was put on there, so their booking had been cancelled in a wrong way or something else was done. So they didn't get the email saying that they had the refund. So when they rang up, someone had cocked it up. So, but theirs has been resolved. And then you also had issues with it. Yes. Then I got an email. So I rang them because uh, when I tried to fill out the form, it was like, make sure your flight is, make sure you've cancelled your tickets before you rest, request the refund. I couldn't figure it out. I was just getting frustrated. I was like, I'm just going to ring them because I'll talk to someone. And when I talked to them, that was fine. They said it was all going to be done. And then two days later, I got an email that said they were refunding Ed's ticket but nothing about my ticket. And I was like, what is going on? So then we came home. So I left it. And then when we came home, I rang them again. And the woman I got was so ditzy and she didn't know what was going on. And she was like, but it says both your names. And I was like, I don't care what your system says. My email only says one name and it's only for the amount of one ticket. You need to refund me now. So I eventually got a special request for some reason Ooh. so I still haven't gotten an email from mine but I she gave me a reference okay. code that I have but she also told me that my refund can take up to four to six weeks which is very illegal and if it does take that long holy moly like that's a month and a half a month and a half for a refund that's obscene it's ridiculous so anyway I'm gonna wait two weeks and if nothing comes through in two weeks they're gonna be getting a very nasty phone call because it's ridiculous yeah but anywho that's that yeah we also mentioned that we had so rather than getting the train or the magical shuttle or anything like that we opted to go with a private shuttle private shuttle I couldn't think of the word um, so we went with prestige hyphen transfer we'll put the link for them in the show notes for this because there's like 15 different companies that all have transfer and prestige and all this kind of stuff in their name but i'll put a link for the specific one that we used so it was 150 euro return for six adults so it worked out as 25 euro per person and i'd been given a confirmation i hadn't been given the opportunity to pay up front or anything like that so when we landed we weren't 100 percent sure whether anyone would be there but we went through and there was a lovely French man in a suit that had a little iPad that had my name on it and it could not have been easier. He took one of the suitcases from me, he brought us out to the car, he loaded all the suitcases up into the back. It was a little bit annoying that they couldn't have just moved the baby seat because it did mean that like Breath had to sit in the front on the way there and Ed had to sit in the front yeah. on the way back. So like, eh. But overall it was so handy i'd say it took maybe 40 minutes 
Would you stay there? Yeah, yeah, I'd say so. You dropped us right outside at Sequoia Lodge, took all our bags out for us. You pay in ca- you have to have cash with you. So you pay half of it. So it was 150. So we paid 75 from Charles de Gaulle to Sequoia Lodge, and then we gave we paid the other 75 from Sequoia Lodge back to Charles de Gaulle. Uh-huh. So you pay half there and then to the driver. And then again when we were leaving Sequoia Lodge we had booked it for 7 o'clock because our flight was at 10 just to give us enough time and yeah he was just sitting outside the, he had the boot open for the van and had the little iPad with my name sitting in the boot of the van like it honestly could not have been it was it was so stress free so easy it was so easy I thought it wasn't real I was like is this really happening yeah. like we were in the, we were in the van on the way in like less than 10 minutes yeah it was super handy I was like this is mental um, because it was so easy and we had such a good experience, I decided to look up how much it would be for, because we're going again in a few weeks with your sister. So we decided to kind of price it and see how much it is. And it's working out as 20 euro a head each way. So it's 120 euro for the three of us return. And considering the magical shuttle is 23 euro each way, which I did not realize that was as expensive as it is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So because we, we normally get like a 10% off code. Yeah. So we're actually each saving six euro which by is, getting the private transfer, which and is it'll crazy. take so much less time. Yeah. So bloody buzzing. It's so much more direct as yeah. well. So couldn't could not recommend them more. As I said, I will have the link for them in the show notes. We're obviously not affiliated with them in any way, shape, or form. Lol. <laughs> but we just, I mean. I don't know how many times we've gotten the magical shuttle where the bus driver has honestly scared me. Yeah, a lot of shouting. Very aggressive. You go completely round the houses with all the hotels. So, honestly, especially... I don't know how much it is for two people. Mm. I do need to look into that. But certainly, if you are three or more, seriously look into using prestige hyphen transfers. They're great. Absolutely. Hmm. I think that's everything logistics was. Yeah, I was like, and then we arrived. <laughs> And then we were there. So we stayed at, let's talk about the hotel next. Yeah. We stayed at Sequoia Lodge in just standard rooms. Mm-hmm. It was fine. Yeah. Me and, my, me and myself. Me, me, myself and I. Me, myself and I went and checked in. <laughs> me, so myself and Ed. Me and Ed popped up and went to check in. For some reason, our room was ready. Whoops, sorry. For some reason, our room was ready. Yeah, this was like half ten. I think I realized that when we went up, I don't think our room had been touched in a few days. I think uh, it had been open. I think it had okay, been... Fair. I think it had been vacant for possibly one or two nights. Okay. Because there was some, like, the soap wasn't full and there was some, like, toilet paper. Do you know what I mean? You get extra toilet paper. It was, like, not there. And I was like, I don't think anyone came around and double-checked this room. Yeah. Which is fine, whatever. So we were actually ready to check in. It was grand. We, our room actually looked out into, like, the bins. Oh, lovely. Which was fine. You couldn't hear anything except for the night where our aircon stopped working. So I opened the window because it was too hot and you could, like, hear everything oh. but I was so tired I fell asleep within five minutes <laughs> so it really didn't matter also like Ed lives in like the middle of like he lives like five minutes from the airport so there's always planes going over his house yeah. so I think we were both fine with it I don't think it really mattered that's fair um how we, was your rooms we were out in the Yellowstone building so the way we booked it we booked using the annual pass infinity pass discount so Kate booked her separate and I booked mine and Breath's room and then Nathan and Kiva's room together so they actually gave us like joint rooms cute um, like if we both unlocked the door we could go yeah we'd go through it was fun I finally got to use one of those doors um, <laughs> our rooms weren't ready which was totally fine because I kind of oh. figured they weren't going to be anyways yeah we weren't expecting them to be ready at all no so we got the keys so yeah, we were up on the third floor in the Yellowstone room. If you want to see what the like standard Sequoia Lodge rooms are look like currently, I did a whole room tour of Nathan and Kiva's room. <laughs> and that is in the day one highlights on our Instagram. So go have a look there. There is very few sockets. Aren't you proud I didn't say plugs? Yeah, well done. There's two. Rob, aren't you so proud? <laughs> so yeah, bring an adapter because me and Breffney would have been screwed between plugging in phones and his vape and the camera and everything like that we would not have had enough yeah like we had one socket in the main tv unit and then we unplugged the lamp and used that one see our lamp was broke Um, annoyingly not that it really mattered because we weren't in the room anyways but yeah so like my plug for my 
charger actually has two USB ports in it. So that was fine. So we could both charge our phone out of one plug. And then we alternated between charging our battery packs then in, oh, the, other, okay. in the other socket. But then that's all we needed it for. But Fair. we would have enjoyed yeah. some more. <laughs> Be nice. But yeah, if you want to see what the rooms look like, go check that out. Um, it was quite funny because they... So I, when I booked it, we ha- a lot of us have very Irish names. Me and Kiva have very Irish names. Brefni has a complicated name as is. And Nathan has a very complicated last name. So me trying to re like spell all this out to a French person over the phone. I think my name was right because they had it because they pulled up my annual pass. Yeah. That was where it stopped. <laughs> so they, I think, missed the O off Kiva's. So then they just assumed me and Kiva were a couple. So me and Kiva were allocated to a room. And then they had Brefney down as Miss Brefney. <laughs> <laughs> and they spelt Nathan's last name a completely wrong way. So they actually had the keys split up that it was actually me and Kiva in one room and Brefni and Nathan in another room. Mm-hmm. So we had to try to figure out what keys went where and it was, yeah, it was fine. But yeah, we dropped our, we got changed, dropped our rags off. But overall, I, I had always said that Sequoia Lodge was my favourite and I suppose it was probably a little bit biased saying that beforehand because we'd only ever stayed in the Golden Forest rooms, which are obviously very close to the amenities. You get all the benefits of being a Golden Forest room. But even staying in the standard ones, like we were in one of the outside buildings. We were over beside where the pool is. Mm-hmm. It, but like we, were, it was kind of like, here's the main building. There's the pool. The building we were in was right in between the two of them. So you were really close to the parks. You were really close to going into the hotel. You were close to the pool if you wanted to use that. Like everything, it it was the most kind of central place we could be without being in the main building. Yeah. Um, But yeah, super, super quiet. Couldn't hear a thing. We didn't have any issues with the aircon or water or anything like that. Other than the lamp working, our room, the lamp not working, (laughs) our room was perfect. But yeah, and the beds are so comfy yeah it was like they're very oh. hard but I quite I quite like them I prefer harder beds because I have kind of a dodgy back so if I have a bed that's too soft it wreaks havoc with me back yeah. but yeah I love Sky Lodge I liked being able to just kind of hang out and have a drink in the bar in Sky Lodge as well yeah. we did that me, Brefni and Nathan went for a drink on the first night and then we kind of all met up and went for a couple of drinks on the Yeah, by last the time night. you guys had gone for a drink on the first night, me and Ed were already in bed. Which is entirely <laughs> we fair. We were like, I was like, we're literally about five minutes from going to sleep. <laughs> totally fair. But no, it was really nice. Like, all I didn't encounter a bad cast member the entire time which no, is everyone was delightful which is very different to what we had experienced the last time we stayed obviously in Newport Bay we had numerous issues there but the cast in Newport Bay just weren't weren't the May West shall we say <laughs> weren't the Nina West Oi. <laughs> Um, myself and Ed's room was in the main building. Yes. So it was on the second level which is actually the fourth level because reception's on level two <laughs> So, I hadn't actually thought about that, but yes, that makes total sense. Yeah, our room was really easy to get to. Out of reception, turn left, into the lift, level four, and we only had to walk less than 30 seconds to get to our room. Okay, fab. Which was a delightful surprise after the trek that we had to do in Newport yeah. Bay. I think that's one thing I also like about Sequoia Lodge, is that even if you are in one of the side buildings oh yeah you don't have to walk through the entire place to get no, there no it's it's very direct like yeah it's not like in, but like in Newport Bay the only way to get into the building is the main thing and then you have to walk 10 miles to get to your room but yeah I think I think we I was almost kind of worried that Sequoia Sequoia Lodge had let us down no, but it didn't it didn't it 100% didn't but it didn't I was right. worried I feel like I'd I'd had it so hyped in my head well see because I'd stayed at Sequoia Lodge before not in a golden forest oh okay see I hadn't and that was also a great time yeah I just I think the cast members in Sequoia Lodge really do make the difference like even the cast members in the in the bar they were lovely yeah they were so nice I think it's because the environment in Sequoia Lodge is more chill it's cosy because it's like cosy and foresty and yeah like, it's themed like the rooms are themed after Bambi and everything's just very chill yeah and so I think that like exudes through everyone's personality as well yeah which was nice yeah I agree so that was the hotel so we then made a little trip through the Disney Village and got to the park where we were met with glorious crowd levels oh they were delightful monday 
I think was probably our second busiest day because I actually think Thursday was, Thursday was quite busy was quite busy because obviously people were arriving for the weekend yeah to stay Thursday to Sunday but Monday was a tad busy but we got there really early so we still had loads of time to do everything mm. and it was only like the main rides that were had a long wait yeah like Big Thunder Ratatouille Crush Crush yeah your, your main culprits yeah but then like Star Tours and all that sort of stuff had between like 5 and 15 minutes so that was dandy out yeah I did because we there were a couple Mickey Waffles listen, listeners that were also in DLP at the same time so I know Amelia and Maeve um, were over there for Maeve's birthday so it was lovely to meet the two of those but um, I know they said that they felt that the crowds were quite high maybe it was just because we were there in like what felt like hell week the last time and it was just so so busy then that this just felt like an absolute breeze but yeah. like a lot of the times like I did so many rides in Fantasyland which is not something that I would normally do mm-hmm. but I did so many more rides in Fantasyland because they were only like five minute waits yeah so, and I don't know whether if that's because there's like more going on like there's obviously two parades and the parades eat a lot of people yeah I don't know whether it was that or it's more so because we were like not in the middle of any form of school, school holiday. holidays yeah so I did notice that the percentage of children was quite low was quite low yeah. like there was a lot of adults there which is fine but like the actual percentage of children was actually pretty low yeah and a lot of the kids were quite young so they probably yeah, wouldn't have been true. in school anyway and those rides in Fantasyland tend to build up when there's more children because yeah, children can't go and everything. This is true. This is true. So yeah, I mean, if you're looking for a time to go and experience the Halloween season, I'd recommend the first week in October. It was good. It was gloriously quiet. Mm-hmm. We did get to see one of the final showings of Mickey and the Magician, yes. which was lovely. I really liked it. I wish I wasn't quite so tired. Oh yeah, watching it. I was very tired. I, I was to sit down. I was like, you remember when you used to watch old Tom and Jerry's where they're like sellotaping their eyes open? I kind of felt like I was doing that a little bit. Ed fell asleep. So did Nathan. He was like, I think I fell asleep. was really trying not to. Oh. <laughs> but yeah, it was, it, it had been, it had been a long day by that stage. Yeah. To be honest, we were just like, nah, everyone, it's fine. Everyone's here. Everyone just, it's fine. <laughs> yeah. But no, the crowd levels were an absolute dream. Fast pass was super easy. You could get fast passes for most things for most of the day like big thunder fast passes didn't run out until like three or four which is unheard of yeah i even think it's sometimes later than that me and ed passed them one time and it was a tiny bit later yeah and they were then they were gone because they were just gone because the woman was their 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 little the little overnight cozies weren't on them yet yeah. so i was like they must have just gone yeah but like fast passes were a dream as well which obviously meant that we got to go on significantly more rides than we normally would do yes um i think i went on big thunder four or five times which is very rare for me we rode a big thunder in the front we rode a big thunder in the back we rode a big thunder in the middle all the big thunder it was great i feel like they've changed the photo angle for big thunder though because now you can only really see yeah. the two people at the front and then the two people sitting on the left yeah i find it very difficult to get a good photo if you're on the side because the, whoever's beside you their face just covers your entire face yeah and there's just no point <laughs> yeah we went on Big Thunder loads Brefney went on Big Thunder yeah good man Was. well pleased for him <laughs> he, he I think it's just a big post for him yeah, I know, um, yeah he said he enjoyed the outside bits and stuff like that it was when it was the bit when you're in the dark at the start and at the end that he's just like I just can't deal with them which is totally fine but he gave it a go and we we're very proud obviously we've spoken about Terror of Terror I say we you've spoken about Terror of Terror yeah I don't need to speak about Terror of Terror again if you want to listen to all the details about the new Terror of Terror overlay we did a mini waffle on it mm-hmm. I won't repeat myself apart from that it was great and I went on it five times A. we did Star Tours we got Star Tours in English oh we got Star Tours in English twice yes both times were fantastic yeah I stand that if it's in the language you understand it is so much better (laughs) oh absolutely i also got to see scenes that i've never seen before yeah i've never had the batu ending i had never had that before Mm -hmm. we got to do pod racing which was great great pod racing was fantastic pod racing was so fun you leant over to me and you were like are we pod racing (laughs) (laughs) are we gonna go pod racing and i was like yeah we are (laughs) it was so good we got to see mass canada which i'd never seen before no you're alive great so 
Um, we also got the starting thing with Kylo Ren, which I've never had before. No, I have had before, but I've never had it in English. In English, yeah. But um, yeah, Star Tours was great. We have come to the conclusion, though, the Star Tours is better if you sit in the background. Absolutely, because your feet dangle while well, they dangle for me. And Nathan. <laughs> You can't anchor yourself to the no, to the seat like and to the ground. Like the seat is definitely higher. Oh, absolutely. You get jolted around way more and it just makes it way more fun. So if you just don't hold on and you just kind of let your legs do whatever, it's a good time. Yeah, I remember when we got off, Ed was like, that was like a different... Totally like, different experience. experience. Yeah. yeah, it's so, so fun from the back row. So... I do, you can't really request a particular row in Star Tours. No, it's a very awkward loader to yeah. begin with. Like, there's a lot of maths the cast member has to do. So, and it's it's not very like the waiting area isn't very space orientated. Yeah. So don't I? I'd, I'd advise not requesting a row. Yeah. But we do stand that the back is probably the best. Absolutely. Um. But 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 got to bring everybody on Phantom Manor, which I was bloody delighted about. There was a point in time we got we went on Phantom Manor and we got stopped on Phantom Manor. For a pretty long time. For a considerable amount of time. So we got stopped. I was stopped right at the like corridor scene where you can see Melanie and the Phantom. You would have been just past it. Yeah. And Nathan and Kiva were, I think, just coming into it. I was willing. Willing us to get evacuated. Yes. All I want is to get evacuated off Phantom Manor. It happened, like, the warning message where it's like, oh, ghosts have taken over. It happened about six times. Yeah. And I leant over to Ed and I was like... We're about one more. Yeah, I was like, I think we're like one more from this whole thing stopping. And he was like, what? And I was like, oh. And then it was like, good news, everyone. And I was like, ah, damn it. <laughs> good news for who, Vince the price. <laughs> but, yeah. I... Oh, I just love Phantom Manor. One of the times we went on Phantom Manor, someone had brought the teeny tiniest little baby, and that baby was so scared. Yeah, after the lift thing, like it was like, bar, 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 and the whole room went silent, and the baby was just like, ah! <laughs> and then the whole room went like, Aww. this baby was definitely less than one. Oh yeah, baby, and like he was just kind of looking at me like, what is going on? So yeah. I was like, oh, I'll just make a silly face, there and you'll yeah. you'll you'll be fine. <laughs> um, but yeah. I love like every time I go now it just makes me so happy I love it I got to like point out all the like little nerdy things to Breffney and he was like whoa this is a lot of stuff that I would just never even know because <laughs> he totally missed you know when you go past the fandom on the second time mm-hmm. and you go back in under the house mm-hmm. and I was like explaining that like you've just gone through Thunder Vesta and all this kind of stuff yeah. and he was like whoa yeah I just didn't realise anything <laughs> I'm like there you go <laughs> um but yeah, went to go for a little stroll around Boot, Boot Hill as well, which I'd not done in a while. Really done in a very long time. But yeah, what was your like favourite ride experience, do you think? I mean, I really enjoyed Tower of Terror. Of course. Obviously, but I feel like that's my obvious number one. Mm. I really enjoyed Big Thunder. I definitely preferred it more at the back. Oh yeah. I forgot how much I enjoyed it at the back. It's so fun. But I actually think my most enjoyable experience was Star Tours when we were sitting at the back yeah. and we got it in English yeah that was I really think fun. like I left that and was like that was great yeah because like everything else I've done quite a lot yeah but like with Star Tours because it can be so randomised I was like that was so much fun never done that before <laughs> yeah very true um, I think mine was the Casey Jr. train. Casey Jr.'s coming down the track, coming down the track with a smoky stack. It's so fun. I'd never done it before. It was something that was completely new to me. I'd never gone on it. And it's just really, it goes much faster than you think it probably does. <laughs> and it's just a bit of crack. Loved it. Good stuff. Absolutely loved it. It was super fun. So yeah, I think that's everything. Excellent for rides. Me and Ed, also not a ride, but a thing. Oh yeah. Me and Ed also went to the Lights Action Motors show. Lovely. Thing. Because it was 2.58 and it was starting at 3. Oh, very good. And I, this was at the end of the last day yes. and I was done with everything. <laughs> I was like, let's go to this. <laughs> I was like, you've not seen this. And so we went and it was fine. It's still the exact same as it was in 2012. Okay. They've, Is that the last time you've done it? Uh, I think so. I don't think I went with my family I might have gone with Danda and that would have been in 2016 I think okay but it's still not changed there's a tiny little bit with like Ed was like I liked how they like fluttered Lightning McQueen to get the children happy and then tuck him away <laughs> it's 
So true. Yeah, and then they basically did the stunt show. If anything, it's been pared down, and, like, some of the slightly more dangerous things aren't in it anymore. Okay. Which makes it a bit more boring again. But Ed was like, it was fine. It's very outdated. Even, like, the stunts in it are quite outdated. Yeah. But if your kids like cars in general, not necessarily the movie cars, but, like, cars, the vehicles, yeah. it's a fun show, and it's a massive people eater. Yeah. And especially it's good to, like, sit down, because like, the show's, like, half an hour long. Maybe f- half an hour to 40 minutes. Yeah. So if you just want to chill and sit down for a little bit, it's good. I had a French family in front of me who wouldn't stop talking. Oh, lovely. So their dad was sat beside us, and the rest of the family was in front of them. So okay. they kept, like, talking over us. And the way the seats are done, they're like bleacher seats. And there was a little girl sat in front of me. And every time she turned, every time she like leant back, she like hit my knee, which I was fine with. I didn't mind. I was like, a kid's a kid, whatever. But she kept like complaining to her dad that I was sitting there. And I was like, what the fuck? Like, what? What's wrong? Like, that's weird. It was weird. I was like, dad, I was like, am I doing something? He was like, no. I was like, okay. Because like, if I am doing something else, like if I was, I didn't know if I was like subconsciously like kicking her or something yeah no she was just like kept turning and pointing to me weird and I was like move then anywho it was fine very strange I took some cool pictures and I think of like the 35 I took there's like four nice ones so because I knew when all the stunts were going to happen yeah so I was just like shoot 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 there'll be a good one in there fab so that's everything for like rides and stuff so we have down is characters I feel like most of the characters We covered off in the Halloween mini waffle. Yes. So go check that out if you haven't, because a lot of the characters that were around were Halloween characters. Yeah. Just before we talk about what I know you're going to talk about next, me and Ed met director Goofy at studios, which also wasn't that great. I don't know if we had like an off time with characters, Yeah. but I was wearing my Goofy movie t-shirt. No, I actually had my jumper on, but then I was like, I have my Goofy movie t-shirt on, so I took my jumper off. I was then freezing, because <laughs> it was so cold, but I was like, it'll be worth it. All for the need of a picture. But like, it was director Goofy, and I was wearing a t-shirt of his movie, and he didn't yeah. notice it at all. He was, I was just like, hi, Goofy, and he was like, hi, and then brought us over, took a picture, and was like, bye. And I was like, oh. It was... I mean, they're cute photos, yeah. and it's cute that I have my Goofy movie t-shirt on with them, but he didn't like gesture yeah. to them or anything it was it was weird it was kind of weird because even on the wednesday was it we'd like made real good use of line birdie so we went and met minnie minnie was actually super cute her minnie was cute Bo was a little bit off but she was totally cool like we got some pictures together yeah and then we got some pictures with the group she made ed kneel down it was real funny but yeah like she she was fine she was lovely like Minnie Mouse is never I feel an overly interesting character to meet at the best of times no but we were doing we were getting so much done and we were like ah sure fuck it and then we went to meet Buzz and the past couple times when I've met Buzz he's been gas he's been great he's been super interactive he's been super animated and one of the things that we've done the last couple times is we always kind of say oh which button is for Spanish Buzz and they'll point to a particular button and they'll like do a little Spanish pose and they might twirl you around or something like that so we had said to Nathan and Kiva because it was their first time ask Buzz which one activates Spanish mode yeah and they asked him and he just said oh he just kind of like gestured gestured oh it's a secret and didn't do any thing and then it was kind of just like everybody get in for pictures and it was just a bit weird yeah and even then like trying to talk to buzz hmm. there was like no interaction yeah i don't know what it was and i it's something that we're going to get on to very shortly but i i don't know whether it was because it was the dynamic of we're a group of adults yeah rather than just the two of us yeah who actually like because when we go even if when we went with amy or even when we went to those couple of things bellin like we're dressed in a certain way that's like yeah look we know the crack we're absolute disney nerds we've done our research we know what's going on like we look like absolute yeah. buffoons because we know what's crack, we know the, what the crack is i don't know if it's because there were six of us they were like ah there's no point yeah, it was just or like if i engage in a dialogue i'm going to be here too long and then because there's six of them yeah it's just weird yeah, it's not even like, like I actually don't know because even obviously yeah we're gonna, we're going to talk about the breakfast in a minute but it was like I didn't really know even how to explain it. Mm. It was just like this is weird. It was just off. Yeah. It was just it was very robotic, like it was very 
this is what you do hi hello here's a hug get a picture goodbye yeah and like none of us were asking for autographs like even I'd understand like okay if all six of us were asking for autographs and individual pictures and then certain yeah. sets of, but like we weren't we were just looking for a bit of fun yeah so <laughs> it was it was kind of weird and like I think what kind of because the only character we met before then was Darth Vader which Darth Vader's always great and we sent Nathan in by himself Darth was, Vader was good I enjoyed that oh uh, Nathan nearly shit himself it was great it was great and the replies that Darth Vader had they were very were very good like even when very on time as well I just remember the last thing was as well that Ed was like oh are you going to ask him for dinner and Darth Vader replied with that's not relevant or something yeah which was just so perfect because yeah. what an I was, I was like wow what an out and even thing. the photo pass could, yeah she was like she was very into it she was very somber she was very like I'm here with Lord Vader like it was gas yeah it was good and the cast members who were there as well were good yeah the ca- the, the cast members outside the agreed wait. But yeah, so like he was the only character that we met on the first day. And then on the second day we met Max and we've covered that off in the Halloween thing, but that was a little bit weird. And then we went to the character breakfast in Plaza Gardens. So we were booked in for the 9.45 breakfast. We went in, we got a lovely seat over the very, as you walk into Plaza Gardens, over to the very far left. Um, It was nice. It was beside one of the kind of like, oh, what do you call those? they're like little sun rooms yeah. that are kind of offshoots of it so we were like great we'll have nice lighting that'll be fine um, so we were sat at a table we kind of pulled the table out a little bit so that breath could get in and out easy enough that was fine we went up and got food food is nice as the ever. standard lovely Plaza Gardens breakfast the only Halloween-y thing they had was this like chocolate bread thing that had like a little pumpkin in it that was very cute that was actually where we met Maeve and Amelia so thanks again for coming and saying hello that was lovely um, so that was all fine and then it seems to be that the left side always gets the like Mickey and Friends characters first and then the right side gets the Winnie the Pooh and Friends characters well yeah. not Winnie the Pooh and Friends because I've never seen Winnie the Pooh Winnie but the Pooh. like the Winnie the Pooh themed characters Yeah. so the first character that came up to the table was Donald and Donald was not anywhere during Halloween. We were both devastated that we weren't going to get to meet Donald. Yeah. And I've never seen Donald in there. I've had Goofy and I've had Scrooge, but I've never had Donald. Yeah, same. So when we saw that it was Donald, we were like, fuck yeah, great. Like, yeah. delighted. So the way we figured we were going to do the pictures was that, so we were sitting at a six-person table. Against the kind of back wall was you, then Ed, then Breffney was in at the corner. Mm-hmm. I was sitting opposite Breffney, and then it was Kiva and Nathan. So we kind of had it all like set up. So Nathan and Kiva would get a picture first against you would kind of take the picture so we'd have the better lighting. Yeah. Me and Breffney would go in and then I'd take the picture for you and Ed. Like we had a plan so that we could probably do it all in a minute. Yeah. Like we had it set up that it would be very boom, boom, boom. Like we don't mess around. We get that there's only so much time they can spend at each table that was fine like that we would have kind of anticipated to be a bit more of just a take a picture and go type deal yeah because that's what we've experienced there previously we will just foreshadow all of this with it was not packed no it was quiet i'm gonna go with it was like three quarters three quarters full, full? Yeah. yeah like there were there were a good few empty there was tables. a lot of empty tables especially around us yeah so that was fine so Donald comes over and Nathan and Kiva get up and get their picture and then me and Breffney go in to get our picture and then before we I could even take a step forward Donald's gone yeah he literally turned around and walked away just gone and we were like it's not even like he said goodbye no he just just turned around and walked away and the character handler was kind of behind him and we now in all fairness I shouted after him yeah and I said oh Donald just kept walking just gone like didn't even look back and so we said to the character kind of, we we're like oh we we didn't all get a picture with Donald and he kind of just shrugged his shoulders at us and we were like but like we were being quick but we still yeah. need to get one picture with Donald these didn't get a picture with Donald and he was like did you ask him and we were like he ran away like what are you ex- yeah like we were clearly doing it in yeah. twos so and he kind of he literally just kind of shrugged his shoulders and was like what are you expecting me to do about it yeah and, and it, I think he was trying to make a joke about it and he like sat down like pretend to fall asleep and I was like that's yeah. not funny yeah like I mean in total that including infinity pass discount like that breakfast was 198 euro for, for six of us. of us yeah that is not a small amount of money no not at by all. any means 
and it just it just they kind of set the whole thing off on a weird tone so basically from what we had learned from this cast member that if we wanted to get two two and two yeah i was like okay i'll we ask need the to, character yeah we need to ask the character ahead of time so that they knew that that's what we wanted perfect so the next character we have is mickey yeah and so i was like hi mickey how are you i was like is it okay if we quickly get two 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 mickey said no you have to get one together <laughs> yeah and he was like no you need a picture all together and and I was like, "Are you? Sh- oh, I was like, really? I was like, not even quick." And he just went, "No." Yeah, which was just and like there wasn't, but there wasn't even a character handy there to take a picture of all of us. No. So like you graciously like you were like, "I've met all these characters before, yeah. numerous times." So Sinead was lovely enough to be like, "I'll just take the photo. It's fine." Yeah. But like it was which, ridiculous. Like, which like it was fine, and like I didn't have an issue doing it, but it it means that like of that breakfast there's no picture of all six of us yeah which is ridiculous and it's really really frustrating so that was kind of like okay um and it like the thing that i didn't understand was that like mickey clearly had seen that we'd asked if we could get a picture with all of us he didn't even acknowledge that i was there that i was the one taking the picture he wasn't even like bye or like hug or nothing like that he was just kind of like right i'm on to the next family and i think the main kind of issue we had was that behind us there was a table with like 10 it was people? like two families i would yeah. say and they got i don't even know how many variations so they got found they got pictures with all the kids and the character they got pictures of each of the families with the characters they got pictures of all boys with characters all the girls with like they and i'm not begrudging other people getting photos by any stretch of the imagination everyone has paid to be there everyone deserves to get the pictures they want yeah exactly. within a and an, an okay yeah. time frame let's not take the piss but it was just it it was just not what we'd experienced previously and it just kind of it really put a dampener on the whole thing and then daisy came up and again she just kind of was very dismissive we, i literally took two pictures and she was gone yeah like she was not hanging around and it was just a bit weird and then it felt like there was a long time between the la- daisy and then when the Winnie the Pooh characters started coming over, like, it felt like that was, like, 40 minutes. Yeah, it felt like we were there for a long time. We were there for a long time. Um, so the characters had gone around everybody on that half, and clearly they were just kind of, like, waiting to go over to the other half or waiting to take their, like, break yeah. between sets, which is fine. But Donald was back over and around us, so Kate just said, Donald, can we get a picture? didn't look at you and just kind of gestured yeah get up then yeah it was kind of just like i, I can't even like obviously the podcast you can't see what i'm doing but he's just like just like sort of gestured his hands of like get up and so yeah. i was like okay cool thanks like we obviously were never rude to them because no. they're still they're still doing their jobs yes so i was like okay cool thank you and then i walked up and he basically turned so his back was facing me and i was trying to like maneuver myself yeah. So that, like, I was on one side and Ed was on the other. But Donald just, like, wouldn't move. No. He and was... I was like, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah, like, it was just... It, it was like they were pissed off that they had to be in this picture and that you'd asked for an extra picture. So they were just going to make it as difficult. It's like, you know, when, like, a six-year-old doesn't want to do something. Yeah. So they just purposely make it as awkward as possible. It felt like that. Yeah. And it's like, mm. so that was fine. Well, no, that wasn't fine, but that was was what it was. So the characters went off, and then they switched. And every other time I've been there, you get Tigger, you get Eeyore, and you get Piglet. Yeah. There was no Piglet. No. It was just Tigger and Eeyore. So not only had we had a really bad experience with the three characters... We were then missing a character. We were then missing a character. So at, by this stage, we were... Because we've always said that we think the Plaza Gardens breakfast is, like, such good value for money... The food is lovely, the characters are great, the setup is great, and that it is the best value character meal and stuff like that. And we'll kind of get onto it. And I think if you are going as a family, and if you are going maybe as a group of three adults or less, then yeah, sure, it probably still is. But yeah. if you're going as a group of adults of three or more, honestly, I wouldn't waste your money. Yeah, I think they just don't give a shit. Yeah. I think they just look at you and go, ah, there's no point. Yeah. So, I mean, Tigger was great. Tigger Tigger, attacked me. Like, luckily, Tigger was the last character we met. Now, I have to say, even with Eeyore, 
like Eeyore was like, I'm going to go with Eeyore was kind of in the middle. Yeah. Because Ed even, Ed even asked him, he was like, oh, have you got your tail? Because obviously Eeyore loses his tail a lot. Yeah. And he like turned around and shook his butt and was like, here's my tail. <laughs> Which like was a, yeah, at least a bit better. Like at yeah. least when you did some, when you asked the guy character something, they at least did something. Yeah. And then luckily Tigger sort of like uplifted the whole thing and like yeah. was giving everybody hugs. Yeah. Tigger was like, you get a hug and you get a hug and you get a hug and you get a hug. <laughs> yeah. Because like I was standing up to kind of get a picture with decent lighting because it's the one my one issue well it was my one issue with Plaza Gardens is that the lighting is really terrible Mm -hmm. so at least we kind of had natural light coming in so I was trying to angle myself and as I was kind of walking over to take the picture Tigger literally attacked me yeah it was great I was just like hello (laughs) (laughs) so that was good but yeah we did ask so as we've mentioned the lovely Maeve and Amelia were there and they were at the same sitting that we were at so we just asked what they thought of it and what they kind of made of the characters and stuff like that and they both felt that characters were great they had really good interactions they weren't dead pushed on the food which i mean food is kind of a subjective thing i suppose yeah um but overall they really enjoyed it but both of them noticed what our interactions with the characters were like so they both said that they noticed that Donald just disappeared or that Mickey was quite rude and stuff like that and like it just yeah I think if you I think if you're a group of adults I don't know if I and to be honest I don't know if I'd advise doing any character meal on DLP because even just with meeting characters there was a weird kind of dismissive vibe yeah which I've never experienced a DLP before now no it was really it was just weird yeah which so, makes me think that something happened. Maybe. Because, like, I don't know, like, I, I, I just don't know. But it just seemed like a very jarring issue that we experienced everywhere. Yeah, it was just, like, that was my third time doing Plaza Garden Breakfast in a year. And it was completely different to the other two experiences I've ever had. And I can only equate that to the fact that we were there as a group of six adults with no children. Yeah, pretty much. But you live and learn, I suppose. Yeah. But anyways, moving on from that into kind of general food things. What was your favourite kind of food thing that you experienced, Kate? Um, can I, just, can I say Vapiano's? Oh, Is yeah. Is that an acceptable answer? <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. I feel like food this trip was a lot more hit and miss and honestly a little bit more miss yeah it was to be honest like not in a way that it like ruined our trip no but maybe we'll do we'll do Vapiano's last we'll end on a high end note. on a high so the first night the way it turned out me and Ed went to Five Guys because I for some reason really wanted the chips from Five Guys okay I was like mm, yes give I me mean those. they're very tasty and because because of the way it worked out we, de- we just weren't going to eat dinner with all six of us yeah and I was like this is the only night we can go to Five Guys anyway because nothing else in Five Guys is suitable for vegetarians or sea <laughs> so I was like look we'll just jump for it and we'll go it was ridiculous it took us so long to order and there was only two people in front of us we got two burgers, we shared a fries, and we got two milkshakes, and it was 40 euro. That is so ridiculous. It's just outrageous. We waited ages for our food. Then when the food f- was there, we were like, sorry, we're waiting for two milkshakes. And the girl went, you pick up milkshakes over there. And we were like, okay, but there's no one like actually making milkshakes. So we went and stood over there and then waited. And the girl shouted over to all the guys... And was like, I need two milkshakes. Were there five of them? No, there was, there was, there was loads of them. That's the thing. There was loads of them and nothing was happening. Miss Fame, how's your head? It hurts. I can barely hear a thing inside this, this muff. She hasn't had any complaints yet. Thank you. You're Michelle. welcome. <laughs> so she shouted over to them. Nothing happened. And we were just standing there. And then about four minutes later, she like angrily took off her gloves because she was like the person putting the food in the bags yeah and then went over there was a guy waiting in front of us even though he'd ordered after us she made his milkshake first lovely and then made ours but she didn't even check our tickets she just went what did you order oh and we were like oh two chocolate milkshakes and I was like oh but no cream and she was like okay and then just made them and gave them to us like she didn't check anything hmm. but also like if you order five guys in town they make the milkshakes and shout it out to you. Yeah. It's not like a separate thing. 
so it was weird and it was expensive and they had this whole kerfuffle with the refillable drinks because in france they have a law that you can't sell refillable drinks so basically all of their cups have an rfid chip in the bot in the bottom yeah and so when you try and put it in a second time this alert comes up now friends the alert only comes up in french oh helpful and so nobody knew what it said like for all you know it said this flavor is not available and anyway so you have to go up now there is a sign in the middle of it that says we will give you another cup come 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 to us but nobody was reading it and that says it in english and french and basically they have this roll of stickers of rfid chips and you stick it to the bottom of your cup and then you can go and go a second time i was like what a ridiculous system yeah but anyway i would highly recommend not going to five guys i think it was very over like five guys is overpriced anyway at home but it was like more overpriced again it took ages just to just everyone's rude no bueno yeah speaking of no bueno yeah I, for the longest time, have refused to go to Planet Hollywood in Disney Village. Went there in 2013 and I had, I think it was a pizza or something like that I had. And I was horrifically unwell. Like, I was so unwell traveling home from Disneyland Paris and had food poisoning from Planet Hollywood. I said that we would go back, we'd give it a go. They do have tons of tons 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 of celiac friendly options in the menu like and that was the main reason that we went because they have so many things so we go we sit down we get put at the world's smallest table where oh my god kiva, that was ridiculous kiva literally like couldn't sit down like we had to it got to the stage where they were having to drag out tables so that people could go in and sit in like the long booth down from us it was just it was obscene the seating in there needs to be sorted but so we go we get we're ordering drinks and stuff we all order cocktails we're all feeling fancy the cocktails were a tenner each yeah i don't think now don't get me wrong this is coming from a person who spent 20 euro on a cocktail in the design hotel the cocktails were fine i i argue that there was any alcohol in them to begin with <laughs> yeah i d- they're de- yeah no there was if there was a whisper of alcohol i would be shocked mine just tasted like sprite yeah so the cocktails were a tenner each and then we didn't opt to get appetizer we all just got mains i didn't like the sound of the vegetarian mains so i thought i was going with the safe option and just ordered the vegetarian nachos they were horrific yeah they were pretty bad like they were stale tortilla chips with just a lump of cheddar that had i assume at one stage was hot and gooey but by this stage was not um there was like droplets of guacamole and droplets of um sour cream there were beans that weren't cooked on it like they like they had like little black beans on them but like they were not cooked in any way shape or form yeah and there was onion on it and that was kind of it and like i ate bits of it i also ordered a side of chips to go with it which i'm quite glad i did because the chips were actually chips were quite good chips were quite nice (laughs) um but i was a a couple hours later doubled over in the fetal position in the hotel room like clutching my stomach there's definitely something so that unwell. doesn't agree with you like i was i was literally running between the bedroom and thinking i was going to throw up like i was so unwell and brefney was brefney was having some stomach issues anyways but he was also really unwell after eating in planning hollywood so i will never go there again ever no, I Absolutely had not. I had mac and cheese with chicken. Like it was grand, it was fine. I had to put a lot of salt on it because it didn't really have a flavor. Have a flavor, but like I don't really enjoy Planet Hollywood. Everything feels really grimy. Yeah, like everything feels like it has just like a layer of dirt on it yeah. because it's so old and hasn't been updated since yeah. it opened. Um, all of the like TV screens are like broken almost, and it was fun hearing songs that were like older hmm. like rewinds and stuff but that's definitely not what it's meant to be that's yeah. definitely like what it was inputted with when it opened and absolutely. hasn't changed absolutely but yeah i will never go back there again yeah no it wasn't it wasn't great there's a there's a, a few better options absolutely in terms of food absolutely and then we may as well stick with within the disney village 
One thing before we get on to Fabiano's, uh-huh. we tried the chocolate covered strawberries. Yes, they were good. They, lads, you just need to give them a go. I would have preferred if she'd let them dry a little bit longer. Like, I yes. would have been fine waiting an extra minute yeah. for them to dry on her little dry rack instead of giving them to me when they were still melty. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it's a fiver, you get five, or in my case, I got one that had six. Strawberries on a skewer, they're freshly dipped in chocolate. Oh, they're so nice. They're, I mean, it's a, it's a euro per strawberry. Hmm. But honestly, the strawberries are delicious as well. Like, sometimes you get some dodgy strawberries. Yeah, they're all mushy on the inside. They are not dodgy straws. They're very nice. Um, you get them in just the little huts that are throughout the village. Mm-hmm. So, would recommend. Brefney also got, he, what did he get? He got marshmallows dipped in dark chocolate. Ooh. He said they were very nice. Good. But yeah, would recommend that. Yeah, it was good. But I think the king of Disney Village. The Vapianos. Vapianos. I just, I love it. I ate there twice. Oh yeah, you did, Jeffrey. We went there on the first night. It was me, Brefney, Nathan and Kiva. If you are going with someone that is celiac, we're going to do a whole episode around going to DLP with a celiac. But they can have the risotto. And the first night that we were there, I think Nathan got the creamy mushroom risotto. Mm-hmm. And in fairness, it looked fucking bomb. It yeah. looked really, really nice. And then nice. the second night, he got like the four cheese risotto. Yeah, which also looked pretty damn good. Yeah. Um, me and Brefney got a pizza. They didn't have the mac and cheese the first night, which I was very devastated about. And Kiva got some pasta thing that had prawns in it. Um, when we went back the second night, it was very busy. Mm. We but couldn't get a seat downstairs. I think it's because we knew what we were doing. We were kind of okay. Yeah. So we ended up sitting upstairs. There was a horrific smell. Yeah, I don't know what that was. I think it was the bathroom. Oh, do you think? I think so. Oh, it it was smelled. It w- but you could smell it everywhere. Yeah. It wasn't even just upstairs. Um, the upstairs is horrifically warm as well. It was so, so warm. But it was it was fine. It was quite busy. So I know the guys that were waiting for pasta and stuff, it was quite frustrating yeah. because it was taking so long. But we, me and Kate did the Kate and Sinead special. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Getting a mushroom pizza and splitting it and splitting mac and cheese. Oh, so good. So, so good. Highly enjoyed. I think, I think Brefney sorely regretted not going for a different option because he got some pizza. It was like a white based pizza. And there was an egg, there was egg and cream and stuff on it. Mm-hmm. He wasn't the biggest fan of it. I'm always against white based pizzas. Yeah, I don't and always enjoy them. No, I like I like just plain tomato sauce. I don't even like barbecue based pizzas. Just give me just give me regular. I'll dip it in barbecue sauce, but just give me regular. But yeah, I I love Fabiano's. I think their food is really nice. Yeah, I think it's really reasonably priced. Ten like percent off for Infinity Pass holders. Hey, like. What's not yeah. that? Like, f- five guys in Pana Hollywood don't give any no. discount at all. No, they don't. Um, but it's also, like, it's cooked fresh there in front of you, which Pana Hollywood is certainly not. Like, everything in Vapiano's is made to order. It's made fresh right there in front of you. I think value for money-wise, it's great. Yes, yeah, so I do. I. Like, how much was... I know you paid for Ed as well, but how much was our bill? Oh, I know that for the three of us, it was 50-something. Like for three drinks, two pizzas. Yeah, like the drinks are four forty, and they yeah. find them, mind you, <laughs> they're four forty yeah. for a glass bottle. But yeah, I just I love Fabiano. It's so nice. And um, the other food thing, just to note, because it's something that we have mentioned previously, is the loaded fries in Fuente del Oro are no more. First of all, Fuente del Oro is open. It is, which we didn't think it was going to be. Yeah, and then also, yeah, they've changed their menu. So, if you were looking for the loaded fries, they are no more. However, if you did still want them, just order fries and order, I think it's the vegetable chili. Yes. And then just pop them together. Happy days. I suppose. But yeah, that was a sad time when we realised that wasn't a thing. Yeah, I asked for loaded fries. She said, yeah, sure. She handed me a load of fries. Yeah. (laughs) I was like, oh. But we did get churros and the churros were good. Oh. It was, was the great. first time Ed ever had churros. He hey, loved them. Churros are fucking delicious. When we got, we somehow ended up with an extra packet of churros. I think it's because they didn't have the ice cream for Nathan. Oh. And it's like, he's just ordered a celiac menu and you've given him you churros. churros. Yeah. Could have given him a yogurt. Yeah. And anyway, Ed was like, could I maybe... I'm like, sure. Because <laughs> yeah. I don't think you could eat more than one packet. Like, they're very... Oh, God, no. You'd, you'd Not in one anyways. No. But anyways... So that's everything for food. Um, and yeah, and any like Halloween-y based food we covered in the Halloween mini waffle. 
Yes, which is definitely worth the listen because there's lots of delicious stuff. Oh, yes, I did. So, we're really wrapping it up. Well, a couple of final things to talk about. Me and Ed had a little bit of a wander over to the far left of studio. Sorry. <laughs> Just looking at you with your bat. <laughs> me and Betty uh, so me and Ed had a bit of a wander over to the far left of studios where nothing is happening at all where they've completely knocked down Armageddon yeah and the construction walls are pushed back all the way before the entrance to the Blockbuster Cafe mm-hmm. so it feels really weird down there yeah it's very empty if you are going into the Cars show and you sit all the way to the far right you can see directly into the where Armageddon used to be and you can see into the construction area for Spider-Man so I think we might pop back in there at Christmas mm. because I know that they've started going vertical on it. Yeah. So might pop back in at Christmas and see what it looks like. See if we can still see stuff because Tim Tracker's not here, is he? So <laughs> time for a construction update. Uh, so that was pretty much it from studios. Also, we saw the new painting on the animation celebration. Oh, yes. Studio. Very we'll nice. It, we'll call it by its new name. Uh, and it looks, it, the color is popping. It's lovely, and they've refurbed Peter, Wendy, and Tink, and they also look very, very nice. Yeah, I'm very excited for that. I've also seen ed 2 have posted about some, like, little sketches that they've been posting, so I think they've added Moana, and I think they've added Yzma as well. Moana. Make way, make way. Uh, Yeah, so that was, I just wanted to give, like, a quick little studios update. Uh, Mickey and Magician is now also closed for hol- the holidays Mickey's wah, wah. big band will be coming for Christmas which is great yeah and that other studio which is holding that Maleficent thing that none of us went to nope absolutely not and that's it for my last little studios update yeah we just also wanted to talk about the fact that this is the first time we've gone on a trip with more than two of us or more than three of us yes <laughs> so obviously we had a group of six mm-hmm. I think it worked pretty well yeah I think so too it worked as well as it could have done mm-hmm. we had a couple of issues with people feeling ill at some points so the group had to like split up and obviously me and Ed wanted to go on Tower of Terror and nobody else was up for that which was obviously fine as well so the group did split up at times but naturally sort of and then like naturally came together yeah it's not like we all finished the trip and never want to see each other we all sat in different (laughs) areas of the plane i think it worked out pretty well yeah i agree it was pretty it was pretty seamless overall um as i mentioned breath was feeling unwell at times which is unfortunately unavoidable but um yeah like there weren't any issues with if people wanted to do different things and stuff like that like we were conscious of making sure that because I mean we can just kind of power through and do what we like our kind of typical Disney trip do you know what I mean but I was kind of conscious that whilst I've done most of the Disneyland most of the Fantasyland rides and kind of they wouldn't be something that I would necessarily be pushed to do it was something that Nathan and Kiva wanted to do so I was like okay cool we'll do that and then I kind of figured it would also be handy because eventually at some stage we will hopefully get back to doing Fantasyland (laughs) (laughs) but I'll have been but I'll have been on all the rides recently so that'll yeah I was like this will help research I'm also glad you were there to slow us to remember to slow down because I thought we were going at a final pace until you turned around to me and were like yeah the guys say we have to slow down (laughs) and I was like what do you mean (laughs) we were in the park 40 minutes and we done Star Tours met Darth Vader and been on Hyperspace Mountain and I was like we're doing great and everyone else was like what we the were. fuck is going on but I on? think it was just <laughs> such a sh- like because we know like that's just kind of the way we tend to do Disney but it was a bit of a shock to the system for everybody else so I was like we just need to change your bitch grant I still think it was a good start oh I'm thanks. glad we boom boom boomed it started with a bang yeah then just quickly I've said that for the last three things but we've actually talked quickly about all of them just real quick we just want to mention merch in DLP no different yeah well sorry no Arendelle Aqua was there Arendelle Aqua although if anybody if anybody that listens also watches Drag Race and has seen All Stars 4 there's like a promo bit where they have to like promote a club and Naomi Smalls and Valentina are promoting a club called Club 96 Club 96 Mm-hmm. and their whole thing is that the whole way through the ad they're going club 96 <laughs> the whole way through it okay so every time nathan saw anything to do with arendelle mm-hmm. aqua be it someone on sitting in front of us on a ride had it or it was on a merch cart or anything like that it'd be like arendelle aqua <laughs> every single time 
and it just oh my god it made me laugh it's fine I don't think it's worth the money I quite no. like the spirit jersey mostly because it's sparkly yes but I think the blue is too pale mm-hmm. I agree so I probably won't buy anything from it like I just it baffles me that they have the lounge fly backpack to be honest where's um, Pokemon lads yeah also we saw the Arendelle Aqua Treats yes but because I didn't buy any of the merch it meant I wouldn't have a cute photo so what was the point <laughs> Because I feel like that's the that's only... what we're like. Because I feel like the only point you buy merch-related yeah. snacks is if you've bought the merch. No, I agree. I agree. One thing that I did just want to touch on, we did ask if anybody had particular questions to do with our trip. Most of them were just kind of to do with Halloween, and that's fine. We've covered off most of them. But so we... Most of the questions were about Halloween and stuff, and that is fine. However, we did have a question just about the trip in general. One of which was about food which I feel like we've kind of covered off she asked what our favorite meals were mine was definitely cafe Hyperion which I never thought I would say Mm. and Fabiano's yes hands down um but she's also asked she'd love to know what each of our highlights were but also what the highlights were for the guys that we were with as well Mm -hmm. so what was your tippy top highlight that wasn't just her of her I don't know. I think getting to experience Disneyland Paris with Ed yeah. was actually pretty nice. Because I was like, this is cute. Because <laughs> I was like, now you're here and I don't have to just like explain everything to you when I get back and you like don't want to listen. Because now you're here with me doing it. <laughs> the world hasn't ended. Yes, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so that was like, that was actually pretty fun. And like getting to like show him the things that I enjoyed. Yeah. And like even but like watching him actually enjoy things because I was worried that he wasn't going to enjoy himself yeah I was worried that he was just like going to go because I liked it yeah but he was like really up for it like he really got the characters he was like getting into the whole like being with the characters things he like decided what his favorite rides were and he was like let's go on this again and I was like oh okay cool so yeah it worked out he was like he was really into like figuring out how to like to make the most of time. He was like, oh, should we go get a fast pass for this and then go on this? Oh, do you want to just go on single riders for this so we can just get it out of the way? And I was like, all right, cool. So that was fun. That was probably my favorite bit. Fair. I'll kind of piggyback on that and kind of getting to go on Phantom Manor with Breffney. Oh yeah, that's like a lifelong dream. <laughs> yeah. Phantom Manor is my fave. I will give an honorable mention and I feel like you'll agree with when we all went to the bar on our last night and just had a couple drinks and honestly just laughed our asses out off oh, for the entire so time funny. we were there. That was such a good time. So we had some of the Halloween drinks which we have discussed on the Halloween mini waffle but I mean Breath got some beers. I got a really weird slushy that was not sweet in the slightest. You got a pina colada yeah, in a, it was a very time. lovely glass. Yeah it didn't steal it. And me and Nathan got glotinis. Yeah you were yeah you did I yeah. still got my glow teeny yeah and then we had a little pond to the shop and yeah, I wasn't was I wasn't quite tipsy enough yet no you didn't buy anything no I didn't on the way back up to the room I like couldn't stop laughing and I was like okay you need to go to bed <laughs> I was like I just I was obviously like so hungry yeah because it had been a while since we had dinner yeah and even though I'd only had two drinks he was like okay <laughs> yeah I'm not dealing with this shit <laughs> yeah so yeah that was just it was just kind of nice having some like chill time with everybody in the bar it yeah, was good. It was good I like having a hotel that has a decent bar yeah and I feel I, I'm aware that that's very Irish of me but but still when you're on a group when you're on a group holiday with six people yeah, exactly. and you have like busy days every day like we were up early every day we went to bed at like nine every day yeah, true <laughs> so it was nice to just we have like a, we were on an interesting schedule yeah it was nice to just have like a chill time yeah but we did ask everybody else what their favourite things were as well yes so what was that's Space Mountain which I wouldn't have thought he was going to say neither did I because <laughs> he only went well you went on it again didn't you uh, we went on I know I went on it twice with you guys yes because then we got fast passes for it yeah. and we went on it again and we I asked for the back okay because I went he was like why are we going to the back and I was like because it's fun <laughs> that launch seems so much longer yeah the cast member I was like sorry can we get the back he was like absolutely my damn then I woof and he was like what are we doing I was like come come <laughs> uh, yes we did it three times yeah he seemed a little bit apprehensive after the first time but when we wanted Which it again he I was think like it's fine. Oh, yeah. but I like I basically pressured him I was like come on it again yeah because he was like oh I don't know if I want to go on it again and I was like are you sure because yeah I think it's worth trying a second time and he was like okay but I'll regret it and I was like you just sit down I maintain that Space Mountain is you have to go on it twice the first time is a complete like assault on your senses 
the second time you can kind of appreciate it a bit more so that's fair Breffney's bless him his favorite was Phantom Manor which I loved I kind of had a feeling he would really like Phantom Manor and obviously I mean Kate can probably attest to this I don't think you can go in Phantom Manor and not enjoy it when there's just me being an absolute ball of joy (laughs) and I just sing the whole way round so yeah Breath's favourite was Phantom Manor which I was very happy about yes oh yes Um, Kiva has said her favourite is all of Frontierland which I kind of agree with there's not I'm going to take the whole chunk of this park do you know what that's my entire favourite I actually think Frontierland is my favourite land Wow. I'm, I'm, I'm saying it I love Big Thunder I love Thunder Mess and Mercantile is my favourite shop within Disneyland Park mm-hmm. I think Thunder Mess and Mercantile always has all the good stuff always has all the good pins I love Fuente del Oro I just and obviously it has Phantom Manor and that's usually where Jack is so I mean what what more could I want I think I, I, I'm kind of right there with Kiva I think Frontierland is just it was it's good for the time of year yeah definitely and last but not least, we had a whole segment about what would be Nathan's favourite part. Who was right? Sinead was right. <laughs> Breffney thought it would be Darth Vader. Nathan thought it would be Space Mountain or the Fireworks. I said it'd be Star Tours. And it was bloody Star Tours. That's because it was great. Like you just, as I said, when we did the podcast with Nathan, you never see people get off hype. You never see people get off Star Tours without a smile on their face no everyone's like it doesn't happen it doesn't happen because it is just one of those rides where it's thrilling enough but it tells a story and it's just fun it's just it's big I love Star Tours yeah absolutely it's good every time yeah because when I told Ed I was like there are so many different variations oh yes and he was like oh wow I was like yes you could go on it again and again and again and again yeah like I've been on Star Tours in Disneyland Paris I 25 30 times and I saw stuff this time that I'd never seen before. Yeah, same. So let's go pod racing. Let's go pod racing. Yeah, and it wasn't all new stuff from the new movies either, which was no, good. Yeah, because I was like, well, maybe it's just that. So yeah, but overall, everyone enjoyed themselves. And I think Eva said they would absolutely go back. So that was good. Yeah. Breath yeah, it's good they didn't turn around and go never again. Because I turned around to Dad and was like, "Are you excited to come back at Christmas?" And he was like, "Sure." I was like, "Excellent." <laughs> Yeah, so that'll be nice. I'm, I'm kind of excited to do a, a very different type of trip when we do our anniversary trips. Um, I say that. We are going at completely different times of the year. We're not going together, don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> our anniversary. <laughs> but yeah, overall, I, I thought it was a really good trip. Super productive. Got bloody loads done. And it was very enjoyable. I agree. Fab. So... That ends what has been several hours of recording. Yeah, I'm tired, Nick. Can we go to bed? Yeah, I agree. <laughs> so, thanks so much for listening to this episode. As we mentioned, there's two other mini waffles. There's one all about Halloween. There's one all about Terror of Terror. So, go check those out if you have not already. And we shared as much as we could. We were very much trying to just enjoy ourselves when we were there, but we did share on Instagram stories as much as we remember to so you can check out our highlights on our instagram at mickey waffles pod we've separated it out per day we've also put up our own little dlp hauls on there as well so you can see what we spent our money on very little i bought more <laughs> <laughs> but was anybody surprised no so october is a bit mental so these episodes are going out this week next week we're going to try do our mop-up episode with nathan yeah um which i'll actually be on this time fingers hey. crossed <laughs> and then we so we have that week and then we're right back into trip planning again which will probably be pretty it'll be pretty small because yeah. it'll be pretty similar <laughs> it'll just be a mop-up of what did we miss uh, when we first did the Halloween season and what we hope to do again yeah exactly so yeah thanks very much for listening guys we very much appreciate it if you f- feel like you want to share the podcast with other people go go right ahead yeah you just do it sorry we're so tired <laughs> we're just like do whatever you want <laughs> yeah check us out on Instagram if there's anything else that you want to know or that we've not covered any questions that you might have just pop us over a DM we're always willing to chat and 
we're gonna go to bed. Good night. Yeah. <laughs> Good night. <laughs>